Hi there, I'm Eitan and welcome back to the Wix Wiz. In today's video, we're going to be talking about state management in Wix websites. So what is state management? In a nutshell, it is the fact that if I am currently on my homepage and I toggle this on and then navigate away from my homepage and back, then the toggle will be off. But if I have state management in my site, then on this new page, if I toggle it on, go back to home and go back to new page, then my toggle will stay on. So if you want to learn more about state management, what it is and how to do it on your Wix website, let's get started. So before we hop in and start talking about how to manage state in Wix, let's first talk about what state management is, what the problem is in Wix, and then we can talk about how we might try and solve that. So here I've created a pretty simple site, and you'll see that I have a header, I have this kind of widget which is pinned here to the bottom left side, and I have two pages, home page and new page, and each of these individual elements has its own little toggle over here. So I have a toggle in the header, in the widget, and on each page. And you'll see that if I, let's say, toggle this one on here in the header, and then I change and go to my new page, then the toggle returns to its off state as I navigate between the pages. This is also true for this toggle here inside of my pinned widget. And it's also true for each one of my pages. For example, if I turn this toggle on on the home page, and then I go to my new page and then back to my home page, then you'll see that the toggle is back to its off state. And this is because that Wix does not have state persistence or state management built in out of the box in your website. So as you navigate between pages, the state is refreshed, everything is reloaded, and we don't have any kind of memory of what we've done on previous pages. And that's what state management essentially is all about. And when you're managing state, you can give your users a much more streamlined experience in terms of persistence of data and actions between different pages of the website. So the goal that we're going for here essentially is to have the ability to, for example, toggle this on and then navigate to another page and have this state of this toggle being on being stored somewhere in order for us to retrieve that information and then set it to be on even as I navigate between the pages and even as I go to different pages and return the application will have its state stored as long as I don't completely shut down the website or my web browser. So now that we have a decent understanding of what state is and what we're trying to achieve, let's talk about what our options are to do this in Wix. So Wix is kind of a tough cookie because we don't have a lot of control over how our code files are built and run. Uh, one thing that we do have access to is something called storage. So if we go here to the Wix documentation, you'll see that we have a package called Wix Storage Frontend, and this allows us to store data without persisting it to a database and retrieve it at three different levels. Okay, so we have the local data. Okay, so this is stored essentially on the person's um, computer, and it will persist even if the person decides to close the site and open it again in a different new browser. We have session data, okay, which is stored as long as the person doesn't close the browser. And we have memory, which is available as long as the person doesn't refresh the page. And using one or all of these, we could store some information about our state and retrieve it as the person navigates between different pages on the site. So all of these would suffice for that purpose. It really depends on how much you want to actually manage your state. So do you want the state to be managed even if somebody completely leaves the site or returns, or if somebody even just refreshes the page, should that reset the state of the application? That's one thing that will dictate which of these three you use. Another one is their storage capability. So local and session storage can only store up to 50 uh, kilobytes of data. So just to give you an idea of what we're talking about, I have here a kilobytes to word converter. So one kilobyte would be 500 words. So that means 10 would be 5,000 words, which might seem like a lot, but if you are persisting large amounts of data between the 
different state. If you're persisting large amounts of data in your state between pages, then you could eventually you know, supersede this 500 uh, word limit. Uh, and if you're using, let's say, one megabyte, that's already a lot more words, okay? Uh, or a lot more characters that you can store in terms of data uh, persisting between sessions. But this is a limitation that is worth knowing about. So no matter, even if you choose the option to store in memory, you might eventually hit some caps depending on how complex the states you're trying to store are. But I think that for most applications, if you're keeping your data quite concise and you're using kind of smart data structures in terms of storing state, then you shouldn't really approach those limits. So let's demonstrate now how this would look in the application that we built. So I'm going to go back to my site. And the first thing that I want to do is to build a kind of package that will manage the storage and retrieval of state between different pages. So in order to do that, I've created this state.js file. And this is a public file, uh, a JavaScript file on my website. And here I'm going to build several functions that will be used for managing the state. So the first function I'm going to build is a function that can get the current state of the application. So I'm going to need to export this function because we're going to be using it on other pages of our site. And I'm going to call this function get state. And essentially what this is going to do is it's going to retrieve the state JSON that we're going to store in memory. And in order to retrieve that, we're going to need to import memory, memory from Wix storage front end. And in order to get the state, I can essentially say const state equals to memory dot get item. And we're going to say that we stored this item as state. And when this comes back, it's going to be in the form of JSON. Okay, so it's all going to be one long string. And we need to change that into an object so that we can actually interact with it on our pages. So what I'm going to return from this function is I'm going to say json.parse. And we're going to parse the state. Okay, so we're going to be returning a parsed JSON, which is essentially an object, because that's how we're going to be storing our state. Then we're going to have a, another function. And this is going to be store, or sorry, set state. And what this is going to do is it's going to first get the state. So I'm going to say const state equals to get state. And then it's going to set a certain value of this state. So it's going to say state. And here we're going to have two parameters. We're going to have a key and we're going to have a value. And we're going to set the key parameter of this state as the value. Okay, so we're letting people store things as basically key value pairs inside of our state. And then we just have to store this state. So what I'm going to do over here is say, memory dot set item state and we're going to be storing json dot stringify state okay and then from this i'm just going to return the state and that way the person will be able to know that their state whatever they just currently stored in state was successfully stored so let's see how these uh, would work on another page of our site. So for example, let me go here to the master page. And I'm going to import get state and set state from public slash state. And what I'm going to do is first thing I'm going to get the state as soon as the page loads. So I'm going to say const state equals to get state. And then I'm going to set my toggle, my header toggle to whatever the state of the toggle should be based on the state. 
So I'm going to go check out this switch element. And if we take a look here at the switch, then we can see that value is not something that's relevant for a switch, uh, which I'm calling toggle in my code. Uh, but we do have this value here of checked. OK, so essentially we have checked and that's a Boolean that's going to be either true or false. So that's the state that we need to actually persist. So let me go back to our code. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the header toggle dot checked to be equal to state dot header toggle. OK, and if there is nothing, if we've never set the header toggle to on, then this should come back as undefined. And then this should just stay as unchecked. Uh, and if the person decides to toggle this on or off, then we want to persist that state. OK, we want to set that state inside of our state management system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an on change for the header toggle dot on change. And here we're going to have the event. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say set state. And here we're going to have the key, which is going to be header toggle. And we're going to have the value, which is going to be event.target.value. OK, so as soon as the value, uh, sorry, dot checked. So as soon as we toggle this on or off, each time we are going to be setting that inside of our state. And I can also say here const state or const updated state equals to set state. And we can add in here a console.log. And here we'll have the updated state. And what I can do here as well is I can, uh, I can also log state over here. So console.log state, just that we have some keep track of what's going on for demonstration purposes. And since I'm setting this up on my master.js page, this code will run on every single page of my website. So essentially, when I reach a new page of my site, first I'm going to check and see if we've persisted this in our state. And if we did, then we will set the toggle to the appropriately. And if not, we will have the option to change the toggle if we so choose. Okay, so let me go ahead and publish this. And let's see what this looks like now on our live site. So I'm going to open up the console here just so that we can see the state as it's changing. And cannot read the properties of null reading header toggle. Okay, so the reason that I'm getting this error right now is because we currently don't have any state stored. Okay, so here I am back in the state.js file on our site. And let's talk about the error that we are encountering and how we can deal with it. So the problem that we found is that what we're trying to do here is retrieve the state. But at the moment, we have never set the state yet. Okay, because we're just loaded our site and we haven't stored anything in state. And essentially what that means is that this is going to be null. And when we send that to our actual page and try and tap into those properties, then we're going to run into an issue. We were also going to have a corresponding issue over here because when we're trying to get state and this comes back as null, then we're going to try and set a key of null and we're going to have an issue. So essentially what we need to do is we need to in initiate or instantialize this state inside of our memory if we don't already have it. Okay, so here what we can do is conditionally if there is no state in our memory. Okay, so if no state, then what we're going to do is we are going to say memory dot set item. And we're going to set the state. And we'll just set it as an empty object for now. So json json dot stringify. And we're going to have here an empty object. And then what we can do is essentially we can return an empty object because if we're setting state for the first time, then there's nothing, there's not going to be anything inside of our state. So let me go ahead and publish that. 
and let's see if that resolves our issue. So I'm going to go here back to our site. I'm going to hit refresh and let's open up the console again. And now we see here that we got an empty object back from our state. So that looks OK. And now let's see what happens if I try to toggle this on. So now you can see here that inside of our state, the header toggle is set to true. And if I navigate now to another page, so let's say I go to my home page, then you can see that the state has persisted between my pages. OK, so that's very exciting. And this would happen as well for an individual page. So let's say if I go over here now and I go to my new page and we're going to use a similar setup. So I'm going to import. I'm actually just going to copy over the code because it's very, very, very similar. So let me just copy this over to our new page. And the only thing that I'm going to change here is that instead of header toggle, I'm going to change this to toggle. OK, so this is just going to be plain toggle. And this is also just going to be plain toggle. And instead of using the header toggle in the state, it's going to be the new page toggle. And here as well, it's going to be the new page toggle. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and publish this. And refresh my site. OK, so you see now that now that I've refreshed the page, my application has gone back to state zero. OK, and that's because we're persisting the state inside of our memory and not inside of session, for example. If you would want the state to be persisted between different sessions, so between me refreshing the page, uh, sorry, within the same session, then you would have to store it inside of session instead of memory. Um, so that's what I was mentioning earlier. But if I go here now to new page and I toggle this on, and if we go into our console and just see what's going on here, so you can see here that new page toggle is set to true. And now I'm going to go back to my home page and I'm going to go back to my new page. And you can see that we've persisted the toggle on state between the different pages. OK, so that is currently the best solution that I've found for managing state inside of a Wix website. I'm super curious to hear if you've struggled with this before and if maybe you've found another appropriate solution or a better solution than I have. Uh, so please do comment about that uh, inside of the comments below. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. And if you want to see more Wix, Velo, JavaScript code related uh, videos every week, then you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time.